A few years ago, I joined a program in my school in Brazil that focused on encouraging students to use scientific thinking to conduct their own research projects. And I have to say that I was really impressed and quite intimidated by the projects I saw. In the first week of the program, I remember saying to myself, there is no way I can be as good as these people because I'm not a scientist, or so I thought at the time. But it turns out I was wrong. And even though I decided I would like to continue in the sciences in the future, numerous people I knew from the program ended up in careers and post-secondary programs not even related to what they were studying. It was then when I realized how important and versatile scientific thinking can be, not only to researchers, but each and every one of us. This is what inspired me to do this TED talk here today. We live in a world where things can change in the blink of an eye. With the students being bombarded with knowledge every single day and fake news and disinformation on the rise, it can be quite difficult for students to properly identify reliable sources of information and apply the knowledge they learn in school to real life situations. A study led by researchers at McKee University in 2020 on the impact of fake news during the COVID-19 pandemic has shown that there's a strong association between social media exposure and misperceptions about COVID-19 in Canada, which contributes to the reduction in social distancing compliance. Now, we all learn about how viruses can spread in school. However, as we were able to tell from the study, misinformation is able to easily skew one's perception of the gravity of the COVID-19 pandemic, which is a huge problem in the times we're living in today. But let me say that there's hope. We can improve the way we tackle problems in our daily lives with the use of scientific thinking. A process of thinking for yourself that leads you to find reliable answers about the natural world. Now, you may be thinking that this is solely limited to science, but if you consider yourself a critical thinker, you already follow a similar process of asking questions and looking for answers based on empirical evidence or logical reasoning. However, the main problem illustrated by the study is that in our modern society, people consider everything they hear or read to be true, not making use of their critical thinking skills. This exemplifies how lack of critical thinking is becoming one of the greatest problems of the 21st century. So my question for you today is, how do we ensure that we are practicing scientific and critical thinking? And the answer is by using the scientific method to solve problems we encounter daily. For a literary review, the scientific method is a process usually applied in research to acquire knowledge based on evidence, empirical data, and theoretical framework. And it can be used under the context of critical and scientific thinking. Now, there are many variations of the so-called scientific method, but it usually involves the following steps. Asking a question, doing background research on the topic you like to study, constructing a hypothesis, testing your hypothesis with some kind of procedure or experiment, analyzing your results, and drawing your conclusion. And also, in case your hypothesis was refuted for some reason, you can always go back to testing and experimenting to further understand the phenomenon in question. You probably saw something similar in elementary school, and it seems quite basic. In this case, only six steps, which could be easily followed. But in fact, it is more complex. And as mentioned before, it falls under this intellectually disciplined process called scientific uh, thinking, which ensures that we can apply this type of method for way more than just your science fair project. I was introduced to the research at a very young age, and I've been studying the disease multiple sclerosis for the past four years. Using the scientific method when practicing scientific and critical thinking has become a part of my life. By applying any variation of this so-called scientific method, we're able to exercise critical and scientific thinking, which enables us to question and identify whether or not a source of information is reliable based on its characteristics. And it also helps us think about how to tackle complex problems by organizing your thinking process. I'm going to give an example that is close to home. Let's take a look at one application of the scientific method with my latest project entitled Machine Learning for the Identification of Patterns in Epidemiologic Data on Multiple Sclerosis. In this project, I was curious to see if I could find any patterns in the data from this worldwide study called Alice of MS and the income classification of the countries that provided data to, this, to these Alice. So I formulated a question. What type of relationship exists between the income classification of a country and the respective data provided on the Alice of MS? Then I did some background research on the Alice of MS to formulate a hypothesis. 
because high income countries are probably more likely to provide more accurate data for the ALAs compared to low income countries, there might be a significant difference in the data provided by countries from, the, from those two income classifications. To test my hypothesis, I did an experiment where I tested eight machine learning algorithms in three different data sets that were created with the data from the ALAs of MS to analyze if the difference between data was in fact significant enough that it could be used for the proper classification of a country in its income category. After analyzing my results, however, I've noticed that the amount of samples I was using was probably insufficient for this type of study, which made me conclude that due to the limited amount of samples, more analysis should be conducted with a larger and better balanced data set to properly test my hypothesis. As we're all probably able to see, by applying the scientific method in my project, a problem that may have seemed quite complex at first seems much easier for a high school student like me to understand and to tackle. The same approach that helps us practice scientific thinking can be applied outside research as well for you to improve your critical thinking skills. Let's get, for example, statements and problems we come across on a daily basis, such as looking at the statement that vaccinations can cause autism. If you follow the scientific th uh, method, you do the following. Ask a question, can vaccinations induce the development of ESD? Do some preliminary background research on the topics of vaccination and ESD? Study hypothesis, which could vary depending on the person and also your current knowledge on the topic. Conduct your analysis, in this case, a comparison of studies currently published in major scientific journals on the topic. And finally, analyze your results. By doing so, one can easily find the answer. No links have been found between any vaccine ingredients and ASD until now, which was also published by the Center for Control Disease, um, Disease Control and Prevention after a thorough review of the literature. By following the scientific method and questioning the statement that was presented to us, we just allowed ourselves to make an informed opinion about the safety of vaccines, practicing critical and scientific thinking, and basing our opinion on reliable sources of information. In this case, Using the scientific method not only helps one conduct the research, but also ensures that everyone can critically analyze the news they see daily to get accurate information on a topic. But more than discerning from reliable and unreliable sources of information, as mentioned before, scientific and critical thinking also entail that one is capable of using the information they gather to answer their own questions and find solutions to their problems themselves. This means that applying the scientific method to problem solving has other benefits as well. In the summer of, uh, of 2020, I got the opportunity to write a literature, literature review manuscript on nanoparticles as a potential approach for the treatment and diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. And let me say, first of all, that I'm not in any way an expert on the disease or in the study of nanoparticles. But what I can say for sure is that by applying the scientific method to conduct my study, I was able to precisely select what I needed to learn to write my manuscript and the time I had. With a purpose in mind, discuss results of previous studies and future implications of nanoparticles to help treat and diagnose multiple sclerosis, I separated my analysis into the following sections. Part one, on nanoparticles for the treatment and diagnosis of multiple sclerosis, which involved collecting data on the method and results of different studies using nanoparticles, as you can see in this table. And part two, on the cytotoxicity of the same types of nanoparticles analyzed in part one. With a clear purpose in mind and some preliminary background research on the topic, I was able to conduct my analysis in an organized and effective manner, practicing scientific thinking by properly, select, properly selecting what I needed to learn and expanding from what I knew already. A similar approach can be applied to things beyond literature reviews. Here's an example that is more common to a lot of people and that happened to me as well. When I found out I was moving to Canada from my home country of Brazil, I knew that I needed to start studying English right away since I'd be moving in a few months. Now, I had taken English classes in Brazil, but I knew that what I had learned was not going to be sufficient to start my life in Canada. And for that reason, it was clear that I needed to expand from the knowledge I gained in the classroom to achieve my goal in the time I had. So by identifying my question, what's the best way to improve my listening skills in English, and by doing some background research on what others have done, I decided to go with watching videos from native speakers, as I thought that would be the best way to achieve my goal in the time I had. This is a perfect example of how the many aspects of the scientific method 
can be used to guide one's learning that is expanded from previous knowledge and ensure that one can find answers for their questions by practicing scientific and critical thinking. So as we can see, that same scientific method that may at first seem to be only applicable to research can be used for a variety of purposes, enabling us to think critically about the world. Its daily applications range from critically analyzing statements we see daily to enabling us to expand from the knowledge we gain in the classroom to fit our current goals based on reliable sources of information. I know that I was only able to show a few applications of the so-called scientific method in the time we had today. So I'd ask you to take some time out of the rest of your day to think about another problem you're currently facing. Maybe the problem is choosing the university you'd like to go to, or even a financial problem. Break it up into parts using the scientific method and watch as your seemingly unsolvable problem subtly become solvable. Because this is a solution for the 21st century and starts with each and every one of us. Thank you.